this here is Life Juice Light. It's Life Juice without the fruit mixed up. It's just, <laughs> it's emergency, that powdery stuff with uh, V8 uh, fusion. So uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, every time I get a little, little sick, I'm just gonna keep plugging my Life Juice video. It was a cheesy infomercial. It's one of my first videos. So if you wanna watch it, it's up here linked. Anyway, Life Juice Light, here. All right, lesson planning, that's what I'm doing. Sunday afternoon lesson planning. First of all, the worst time of the day for me to lesson plan is in the afternoon. Uh, I, <laughs> the worst time for me to do any type of cognitive work is in the afternoon. It's where my brain goes to sleep, but I have to do it because it's movie March Madness, Madness, Madness. And we're watching yet another movie tonight, 6 p.m. promptly. Uh, we're gonna watch Arrival. So, gotta get my lesson plans done now. That way, uh, later in the evening, I, we can watch a movie and I get all this mumbo jumbo out of the way. What's really nice is on Friday, I was not at school. I had an all day PD, which I was dreading. Oh my gosh, an all day PD, can you imagine? But let me tell you right now, it was, in a, one, it was a wonderful PD, uh, very useful information, something that I'm actually gonna take and use in my classroom on Monday. Uh, that doesn't happen often, does it? You know what I'm talking about. But when a PD actually is useful in your classroom, it was well organized, it was well done, the uh, presenter knew what she was talking about, very well done, two thumbs up. I'm incorporating that into my lesson plans right now, doing my planning, drinking my life juice. I've been getting a lot of questions lately and many of them I can just answer right in the comments, but there's a few of them that I wanted to go more in depth on in a video because I feel like a lot of people might have these questions. So, here we go, first question. How dependent are your kids? I'm thinking about doing teaching as well as film at university, but I'm not sure what age level to do. So Madison, thank you for the question. I teach kindergarten and how do, the question, how dependent are, are your kids? That varies from year to year. It varies from student to student. Uh, b a basic rule of thumb though is the younger the grade level you teach, the more you're gonna have to do to motivate the students to keep them on task, um, the more you're gonna have to be controlling of the classroom. The more control you're going to have to have over their day-to-day -day structures and routines. Um, I can only speak to kindergarten because this is my expertise and it's the only grade level I've formally taught. But in kindergarten, you really have to um, pace yourself throughout the year in a way that makes sense. For example, at the beginning of the year, they have very little freedom, very little control. You have to really lay down what the expectations are. And you gotta remember for some of these students, this is the first time in a school. And this is some of their first time having any type of serious structure and routine. So you have to help them understand that there are certain things that we can do things and certain things you can't. As the year progresses, you can give them more freedoms and more responsibilities and they can take more ownership of their learning and they can be more dependent and they can do things on their, on their own. For example, right now it's March and my students have pretty much taken over their learning. I give them a lot of opportunity and a lot of choice. There are certain times of the day where they don't have choice, but for a lot of the day they can, they can choose what they wanna work on and how they wanna progress their learning. I have, to gu I have a guiding hand. I have to help guide them towards the right direction, but they can be fairly dependent. Um, as far as the older grades, um, I would imagine it's similar. At the beginning of the year, you have more control, they're more dependent on you, and then it gets, uh, they get less and less dependent as the year progresses. And this next question is gonna be the only other question I talk about today because it's a big, big one. This question is huge and it's gonna take up the rest of the vlog because of how important of a question it is. Uh, I got this question, hey Mr. Thing, could you do a video on the tech you use in the classroom? Huge question, thank you. This question comes from Super Hard Knock Life. Thank you so much for uh, this question, it's huge. So my the, the simple quick answer is use whatever you got. Use what you got. Um, early on in my teaching career, I had access to a classroom set of iPads, so I used those. This year, I do not. Um, the, main thing to, the, the main thing to understand here is we need to start moving away from how to use technology in the classroom to that's just what you do. It becomes the, it becomes the norm. I was doing a professional development uh, a couple weeks ago, and we had to read an article, and we wrote we wrote um, some questions and responses to it, and I realized right then that in that 10 minute period, I wrote 
it was probably a whole page of, of writing on a, on a one side paper. I wrote more in that 10 minute period than I had wrote written in the past like year. I don't write anything. I sign my name on stuff, but you're typing. There's, you still definitely have to teach reading, writing, and handwriting. That's not what I'm talking about. But what I am saying is, even as early as in kindergarten, we need to get these. We need to get our students computer literate. So what I have available to me is I have five desktops and uh, six laptops, and two iPads. So I've got my students on the laptops. And the problem with laptops that you don't have with a tablet is there's a lot of stuff you can really screw up. There's a lot of things that they can get into, menus, settings. I mean, it's a full-fledged computer, so they can really get off track. It was a tablet, there's touch and stuff, and you can lock them in and out of apps. But the thing, but the good thing about using computers is at, at an early age is when you grow up, you're gonna need to be able to use a computer, a desktop or a laptop. You're gonna be able, you're gonna, if you wanna learn coding, if you wanna learn how to write websites or anything that you're gonna need to do in the future, you're gonna need to know how to, basic computer literacy and troubleshooting and that sort of thing. So no, I don't have tablets like I'd like, but my students are super, super well versed in, in computers in general. Most of them can log themselves on and off. Most of them can navigate to certain websites. I even got some that are now able to utilize Google. Um, they spell simple words and, and try and look. I have one student uh, who wasn't supposed to be doing this, but um, it's one of those moments, a teachable moment where you're like, hey, it's pretty cool that you figured this out. He got on the internet and searched YouTube, got to YouTube, and then found some John Cena videos. It's one of those things where it's like, hey, you're not supposed to be on that, but that's pretty cool what you got all the way there on your own. So I basically used um, laptops in kindergarten, and, and you know, it was a struggle at the beginning of the year. You know, you have the keyboard, and with most of them not knowing all of their letters, but they're now, they're learning, and that's additional reinforcement, seeing those letters on the keyboard. It's a big skill to have. I also use, my, personally for me, what do I use? I don't have a smart board, but what I do have is the next best thing, the Apple TV. So when you have an Apple TV, you're able to screen share any Apple device that's on the same Wi-Fi network with the Apple TV. And if your Apple TV is hooked up to a projector, you can project, you can screen share your phone or your iPad or your Apple computer to your projector and why that's important is because if we're doing an activity, I can be on my iPad and I can have something pulled up and I can walk around the room with it. I, I typically do my writing lessons that way where I'll have my iPad out and I'll be writing a sentence for them to copy or a spelling out a word with my tablet walking around the room and I don't have to be tethered to one location. I can hand the iPad to a student and they can, they can, uh, they can manipulate the iPad and the students can see what's on the whiteboard. So if you don't have a smart board, the next best thing is an Apple TV with an iPad or a uh, iPhone. So that's it. That is my technology that I use in the classroom. As for websites that I suggest, here are some good websites for the primary grades. ABC Mouse, ABC YA, and anything with reading A to Z. I really like something called Raz Kids. It's a website that allows students to read books online and take quizzes, and it's a, it's a great resource. Those are the main ones that I use. There's tons of stuff out there, but just make sure it's research-based, and the best ones are able to track student data. So ABC Mouse is a perfect example. So there you have it, guys. That's a big, big, big question. What I'm gonna do, though, for you and for me is this week's teaching tip video. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday teaching tip video, it's all gonna be around the tech I use in my classroom. So I'm gonna go more in depth into my Apple TV, into my desktops, and into my iPad. So. Thanks for watching today, guys. I'm gonna finish these lesson plans. I'm gonna finish my life juice. See you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. Remember, find your gift, share it with the world, and you are worth it. See you tomorrow.